Ladies and gentlemen, happy Friday. Happy first week as a new group. Um, should be kind of getting the hang of our schedule by now. Today I decided that I'm going to go over these challenge questions. So remember, if you got them all right, phenomenal. Great job. But if you got one wrong, you really want to focus on that one right now. I'll start with A. A is division, ooh, look at above Harry's head. It's division with a decimal. Well, the first number you say in division is what you have. So we have 350 and 25 hundredths. The second number you say is what you're making groups of. You're making groups of five. So that's how it should be. Where's the decimal? Ooh, the decimal's inside the house. Do we have to get rid of it? No, the decimal on the side of the house is fine. It's easy, it just floats up. And that's it. So now you divide normally. How many fives go into three? Well, you can't take any fives from three, you crazy. How many fives go into 35? Seven. What's left over? Nothing, because it went in perfect. If you count by five, seven fives is 35. This is where things get a little complicated for people. So remember, you take out groups, you tell me what's left over, you bring down the next number, repeat. Take out groups, uh-oh, double zero. Can I take out groups with double zero? No, I can't. So I literally have to put, before I can pull down my next group, that nothing came out. Now, the decimal is taken care of, so I can bring down my two. How many fives go into two? Ooh, once again, your answer is you can't take groups of five from two. Bring down the final digit. How many groups of five come out of 25? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, five of them. What's left over? Nada, nada is left over. Sorry, Harry. Um, let's go to B. Ooh, this is what we're working on right now. So we have 82. And remember, this is a fancy schmancy adult way to say multiplication. None of that kid stuff anymore. You kids don't see those X's anymore. We have 5.5 .5 and we have 25 and 5 tenths. So Remember my aunt, please excuse my dear aunt Sally. First thing you do is parentheses, there are none. Exponents, there are none. Multiply or divide. Ooh, we do have a multiplication or division right here. So we have 82 times 5.5. Use whatever method you feel comfortable with. I feel comfortable with lattice method. So I make my box, I put my 82 up here. I put my 5.5 .5 here. So there's a decimal. Remember, when you multiply by decimals, you just ignore the decimal until you get an answer. So now we fill in each box. This is by five by two, which is 10. This is five by eight, which is 40. This is five by two, which is 10. And this is five by eight, which is 40. Now the answer falls down. You ignore the outside number. Zero falls down. Zero plus one plus zero is one. Four plus zero plus one is five. And four falls down. Now, I have my answer. My answer is right here, 4510. There was one decimal number, so therefore, my answer also has to have one decimal number. So therefore, my answer is 451. So I have a new problem. I have 451, which represents this box that I simplified, minus 25.5. And 25.5 uh, is a decimal number. So how do you subtract with decimals? Ooh, 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 I remember. You just have to line up the decimal. I have this beautiful red line that could represent my decimal. So 451 is a whole number. Whole numbers don't need decimals because a decimal separates the whole number and the not whole number. So you have nothing after it. That's cool. And then you have 25.5 you're taking away from it. 25.5. I lined it up the right way. Now I have nothing and I lose five. It's illegal. What does nothing look like? 
Nothing looks like this. I'm allowed to add that. Doesn't change 451. But I, I cannot do this, so I gotta borrow. I gotta go over the one hole and be like, yo, I need you. But it's all I have. I don't care, not my problem. One of you is worth 10 of me. So 10 minus 5 is 5. 0 minus 5 is illegal. I cannot take 5 from nothing. I'm borrowing. 110 is worth 10 ones, so now I have 10. 10 minus 5 is 5. 4 minus 2 is 2. 4 minus nothing is 4. Answer is 425 and 5 tenths. 425 and 5 tenths. And then let's go to C. C. Ooh, look at this, ladies and gents. We got a good old fashioned comparing fraction. Remember, there's a trick to comparing fractions. You take the denominator and go up and multiply it by the numerator. 3 times 12 is 36. 3 times 12 is 36. Um, I don't know why I can't get anything that's not this color. Oh, here we go. So that's 36. And then 36 times 1 is 3. Hold the phone. You're telling me these are equivalent fractions. That means they have the same multiplier. 3 times 12 is 36. Do it to the bottom. Do it to the top. They are equivalent fractions. They're both equal to 1 third. If we add 12, 36 and simplify it, I guess what it would be? 1 third. Those are equal. And now, last but not least, we have KC. KC is $3.63 left after buying three books. So she bought three books. And then after you subtracted three books, so she had something. We'll call it um, smiley face. She had smiley face. She lost. She took away three times 579. Why? Because each book was 579. So we got to figure out what she had first. Let me put my smiley face there. Smiley face, which is how much money she had at first, minus three times $5.79 will give us our answer. Does that make sense? Because we need to figure out what the books were worth. Um, and then whatever she had before minus what she paid for the books is what she started out with. So the first thing that we have to do is 5.79 times 3. A lot of people feel way more comfortable using the traditional multiplication on this. I get that, right? It's easy. Triple by single. 9 times 3 is 27. 3 times 7 is 21. 5 times 3 is 15. Answer falls down. And then the decimal needs to be involved too. There's two numbers after the decimal. Two numbers after the decimal. How much did she pay for the books? She paid 17.37. So she had something. Our variable is a smiley face. Uh, she had something, and then she took away from it 1737. And after she took away from it 1737, she has 363 left. So we need to figure out what smiley face is. How do you do that? Well, and if you get stuck, what I always tell my students to do. Come up with an easy problem, like 10 minus 6 equals 4. Just a random problem I made up. The part we don't have is the first part. So how can we go from 4 to 6 to 10? What do you do to figure out what how, how to get this missing piece? 
Oh, you add. So in my fake problem, you add. So that means what I, that's what I'm going to do in my real problem. Add. So 17, 37, plus 3, 63. 7 plus 3 is 10. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1 plus 1 is 2. So how much money did she start out with? $21. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense that she had $21. 21 minus 1737 equals $3.63. So how much money did she have before she bought her books? $21. Doll hairs. Let's get with today's lesson. What are we doing today? Today, we are going to, today we are going to take our uh, simplifying expressions one step further. But before I do, our check to make sure you watch this video is the color blue. Blue. So what color was this? Uh, Marker, blue. Blue. It's like how you guys are going to feel on the weekend when you miss our class so much. You're going to be so blue feeling. I get it. I'll miss you guys too. All right. Let's check this out. You were not supposed to see this yet. So let me just cover that. <clears throat> we have 100 times H. What's your answer? What's your answer? What is it? What's 100 times H? Someone just said 100 H's. That's smart. Um, the real answer is you cannot simplify that. Why? Because we don't know what H is. It's a variable. It's an unknown amount. So variables are unknown amounts. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Um, what, what's a variable? Uh, it's an unknown amount, like H, right? That's a variable. Uh, the question is, well, what do you do with this? Nothing, unless someone were to tell us what the variable is equal to. So if someone tells us the variable is equal to four, like 100 times h, and h is equal to four, can you figure that out? Sure you can. What do you do? You go up and you replace h with the number four. Well, what's 100 times four? 400. That's it. That's all you do. So that's all we're doing today. We are going to see a variable. They're going to tell us what the variable is equal to. We'll plug in that, and then we'll simplify the problem. Okay. So this, these, these are the problems we're going to rock today with our friends Harmonia and Arnold. I, I don't. It's been a very long time since I've seen Harry Potter. I am sorry if I upset you by not knowing these characters' names. Um, all right, so you know what we're going to do? We're going to do this portion in the live session. And then whatever we don't get to, maybe we'll have a little H-dub for the weekend. This is the portion that I will focus on during this video. Um, because if I know you guys well enough, these are the ones that make you want to puke a little bit. All right? So let's get to it. Let's look at number 13. And if you have your book, I'm going to ask you very politely to make sure you are filling in 13, 14, and 15, because it's going to help your brain really understand this. Number 13 says four friends earn $24 by washing cars, and they've earned an unknown amount, we'll just call it M, when they were mowing their lawns. They want to divide the total equally, okay? So write an expression to see how much each friend will get. How many friends are there? Four. So four total people are splitting the money. Um, so what are you? What are they going to split? Well, twenty-four dollars plus their mowing money. We don't know what that is, but we do know it's worth m because that's a variable you set. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, I got an idea. Add twenty-four and m together, and split that between four people. 
which is division, right? Division and subtraction, you got to make sure that you write it the correct way because the order matters. So the first thing you want to do is 24 plus M and then take that amount and divide it by four. Looks like this. M plus 24 in parentheses saying, do this first and then divide by four. Now, for B, they're like, eh, we'll give you a number that equals M. We'll call it 50. So what do you do now? Oh, well now we are going to write that equation with 50 in it. So, and this is the part of the video where I say, are you feeling crazy? Pause it, come up with your answer and then unpause it and see if it matches my answer. Fifty plus twenty four is seventy four. So now it's seventy four divided by four. And seventy four divided by four looks like this. How many fours go into seven? One. What's left over? Three. Bring down the four. How many fours go into thirty four? Ooh, let's see here. Um, well, ten times four is forty. 9 times 4 is 36, so it's got to be 8. 8, and what's 8 times 4? So that means we have 2 left. What are you going to do with that remainder of the money? Oh, oh wait, 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 wait. You have 2 left, but the 2 could be split between 4 people. Oh, no, no, no. Remember, we were taught that we could turn 74 into a whole number like that and then we could put our decimal here like that and then we could bring down the zero to help how many fours go into 20 five oh yeah that's right two fourths is equal to a half half is equal to 0.5 so the answer is 18.50 or 18.5 or 18 and a half dollars anything like that works Let's go to number 14. Number 14 says, there are two thirds as many students in science as math. If there are M students in math, how many are in science? Well, yeah, we don't have enough information to know that answer, but what we do know is there's two thirds of M. There's two thirds of M. Of means multiply. So two thirds times M. So now we have an equation, and then now they're like, yo, 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 if there's 27 students in math, how many are in science? Ooh, two-thirds of means multiply 27. Remember, how do you multiply fractions? You call Mr. Crab, and you put it in his eyes, right? Aye, aye, matey. You have to multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times the denominator, but 27 is a whole number. Ooh, 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 ooh. All we have to do is put a 1 under it. Is it still 27? Yes. Is it in fraction form? Yes. Now we can multiply across. But some of you are bright enough to say, Mr. Stahl, you can reduce them before you multiply. 3 and 27 both, you can count by 3s for both of them. So this would turn into a 1 this would turn into a nine. If you know what I'm talking about, do it. That'll make this problem easier. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then just multiply across and stop staring at Mr. Crab's eyes. I know they're a lot thicker than I wanted them to be. Two times 27 is 54. Three times one is three. Now we have an improper fraction. It takes three thirds to make a whole. I got 54 thirds. So 54 divided by three, how many threes go into five? One. What's left over? Two. Bring down the four. How many threes go into 24? What? Like, I don't know, seven? Oh, no, 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 Mr. Stahl. It's not seven. It's eight. Because eight times three is exactly 24. So that answer is 18. There's 18 kids. And then the last one. 
Kim's cat. Um, you know what? Let's skip Kim's cat. Why? Just because we really don't have enough time. All right. Good job, folks. I will see you at 1030. Bye.